Now, have you ever wondered how you can calculate the final angular velocity of a spinning object given its initial angular velocity, the angular acceleration, time, and also the total angle that is rotated? Well, let's get ready to master rotational kinematics with the four constant angular acceleration equations. Now, in this week's Pass the FE exam video, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the world of rotational kinematics. And we're going to be exploring the significance of using the four constant angular acceleration equations to solve complex problems and unravel the mysteries of rotating objects. Now, this problem was created and solved by mechatronical engineer Shante van der Spee, and it's going to be brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and the PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem-solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. And when you take a live online course, PPI guarantees that you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere that you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all of the options available for PE exam prep. In this question, we are presented with a disc pinned at its center. Initially, the disc accelerates from rest at a rate of 2 radians per second squared, and it does so for a time period of 4 seconds. After this, it maintains a constant angular velocity for an additional 4 seconds, after which it decelerates at a rate of 5 radians per second squared until it comes to rest. The task we are presented with is calculating the total angular distance travelled by the disc. Before diving into the solution, let's establish a foundation. While this problem involves a rigid body, it's essential to recognize that the underlying principles are rooted in kinematics, the study of motion without considering the forces that cause this motion. A classic example of a kinematics of particles problem is that of projectile motion, where the displacement, velocity, and acceleration of the body can be determined by treating it as a point mass. And the same concepts to use in evaluating these problems can be extended to our rotational disk under consideration. When discussing kinematics of particles, these equations likely come to mind first, and they are commonly known as the four constant acceleration equations. They are fundamental to evaluating problems like projectile motion. However, in these problems, the object will experience motion in both the x and y directions. We'll delve deeper into projectile motion in a later video to demonstrate these concepts. For our spinning disk, however, we'll extend these concepts to rotational motion by using angular equivalents of linear quantities. When working with rotational motion, this thing results in the four constant angular acceleration equations that we will be using throughout this video to evaluate our problem. What is important to note here is that these equations are strictly applicable to constant angular acceleration. That being said, watch out for cases like these where the acceleration is given as some sort of function. These equations will not be applicable, and some integration will likely be necessary. To solve the kinematics problem, we need to calculate the total angular distance traveled during three distinct phases. During the first phase, the disk experiences a constant acceleration for four seconds, which increases its angular velocity. During the second phase, the disk spins at a constant angular velocity for a further 4 seconds. And finally, in the third phase, the disk decelerates at a constant pace before coming to rest. By calculating the distances traveled during each of these phases, we can ultimately find the total angular displacement of the disk. The angular distance traveled by the disk during each phase is appropriately labeled theta 1, 2, and 3. And these are the quantities we will be working towards finding throughout this video. During the first phase, the disk accelerates uniformly from rest for 4 seconds. Since the initial angular velocity is 0, and the angular acceleration is given as 2 radians per second, we have all the necessary information to use the third equation 
to calculate the angular displacement. By substituting these known quantities into the equation of motion, we find that the disk experiences a displacement of 16 radians. Now, recall that we know the disk maintains a constant angular velocity during phase 2, but the specific value of this velocity is currently unknown. So to accurately analyse the disk's motion during phase 2, we first need to determine its angular velocity at the end of phase 1, when the acceleration period concludes. The disk will continue to spin at the same velocity for the full duration of phase 2. By evaluating the list of available equations, we note that we have all the necessary information to use equation 1. By substituting the initial angular velocity, the constant acceleration, and the time, we find that the disk concludes phase 1 with an angular velocity of 8 radians per second. And with this new information available, we can now move on to phase 2. Our disk is now spinning at a constant angular velocity, meaning its angular acceleration must be zero. With this information available, we notice that we can directly calculate theta 2 using equation 3. As before, we substitute our known quantities and find that the angular displacement during phase 2 is 32 radians. And all that's left to do now is evaluate phase 3. In this final phase, the disk decelerates to a stop. We know both its initial velocity from the previous phase and the deceleration rate. While we could use either the second or third equation to find theta 3, we realize that we don't yet know the duration of this phase. But since we know the disk comes to a stop, we also know that its final angular velocity would be zero. Equation 1 can then be used to find that it takes the disk 1.6 seconds to come to rest. And with the phase duration known, we can now use either equation 2 or 3 to find that the angular displacement during phase 3 is 6.4 radians. Finally, the total angular displacement of the disk can be found as 54.4 radians through simple addition. And that completes our problem. By browsing the options given to us, we can see that the final answer is equal to B. To wrap up, let's emphasize a few key points. Firstly, it's crucial to differentiate between acceleration and deceleration. Remember, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, while deceleration is simply negative acceleration. This distinction is vital when applying sign conventions in your calculations. Secondly, the equations we've explored today are specifically designed for situations involving constant acceleration. Applying them to problems with varying acceleration will yield incorrect results. Finally, these constant acceleration equations are powerful tools. Once you understand the variables involved, they become a straightforward plug-and-play process. By mastering these equations, you'll be well-equipped to tackle a wide range of kinematic problems. So I hope that you all found this week's video to be very helpful. And in upcoming videos, we're going to be answering more of your FE exam questions and also run through more of those practice problems for you all. Past the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click on the subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problems and also solutions weekly. And we want to do this to ensure that you're going to pass the FE exam. And I encourage you all to ask questions in the comments and we'll read them and we'll respond to them in future videos as well. So that if there's a specific topic that you want us to cover or questions that you want to have answered, Past the FE exam will have you covered. I'll see you all next week.